Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Thursday, February 20th, 2020. There you go, 2020, 20. And it's the second month of the year. So here we go. Uh, 398.9 kilometers per second is our solar wind speeds at the time. 3.7 for the density. And once again, zero sunspots to report. That's now 18 days in a row, 34 days without sunspots for 2020. Our TCI still remains elevated at 3.61, which I kind of understood that yesterday when we had lower readings before that solar wind uh, it hit our magnetic field. They've updated the TCI. It went up a few points. KPNSC is sitting at a one right now with a 24 hour max of a three. And I think the solar wind that we were expecting yesterday came early. I don't know. We'll continue to monitor, but we are expecting increased solar wind speeds from that southern coronal hole that should graze the magnetic field. And I'm talking about the one near the polar region. Uh, that one could bring us solar wind speeds increased today. I'm not expecting any G1 activity from it, but who knows, we will continue to monitor it just in case. Let's jump over to the grandsolarminimum.com, our space weather section, take a look at some of our space weather stats. As you saw yesterday, solar x-ray flux had a little bit of activity, but nothing really to write home about. And of course, the KAP indices have fallen since storm levels of yesterday. We are back in the two to three range. And looking at the sun, the whole big picture. <clears throat> well, the only thing that we see right now was this active region that possibly could turn into something here in the very southern parts of the star. That is right next to a very small coronal hole. Again, this is not a sunspot or anything like that, but it is the potential to watch something is just now breaching the eastern limb. And I can tell you now, uh, folks, it's probably not going to be anything more than just a bright area on the star. Other than that, we are blank. And again, I cannot stress this enough. February heading into March. It's a possibility we don't see a sunspot until sometime mid-March, maybe later. Uh, the peak of this minimum conditions were supposed to be around April, May, and it really looks like that we are in a, in a period of time right now where we are not going to see much activity, if any at all, unless we have a rogue sunspot. So again, solar minimum conditions are very deep right now. Uh, we're rivaling space age records from the 2008-2009 solar minimum uh, when it comes to cosmic rays, when it comes to really everything, TCI, everything that we're monitoring right now from the sun, it is flirting with records as we speak. All right, let's check out uh, an article today on the watchers.news. Heaviest snowfall of the season hits Seoul, causing flight cancellations and traffic disruptions. South Korea. South Korea received its largest daily snowfall this winter of 1.6 inches of snow. Uh, let's see, the temperatures also plummeted to 22 degrees Fahrenheit along the heaviest snowfall, but the chilly winds made it feel as if it was around 13 degrees Fahrenheit. KMA also noted that some of the snow that fell in Seoul in the early morning began to melt, bringing down the volume of accumulated snow to 1.3 inches. Furthermore, along Sunday's fall, snow on the ground measured about 1.9 inches around at the same time. The snow was still falling in all parts of the country except the eastern coastal regions and several Geosang provinces areas. Due to the influence of snow, clouds generated by temperature difference between the lower atmosphere and the surface of the Yellow Sea. 11.4 inches of snow fell in Uligan Island in the East Sea, while 2.2 inches fell in Gwangi, and also the same area, Jiwenju. Snow accompanied by winds led to flight disruptions in many parts of the country and also created slippery conditions on the road. The first snow of the season fell on November 15, 2019, but the amount was too small for accumulation. Small amounts of snow were recorded on December 7th last year and January 1st at a mere 0.11 inches of snow. Monday snowfall as well as other parts of the nation occurred after unseasonably warm weather this year. <clears throat> Last month was South Korea's warmest January on record. Boy, it's just warm everywhere, isn't it? 
and the average monthly temperature across the country was 37 degrees, which was 6.8 degrees higher than average January temperature records. Uh, is it me or does it seem like things are getting cherry picked? Because 37 degrees Fahrenheit is still chilly. I mean, it's not flip flops and shorts weather, guys. I mean, we're talking about average temperatures here for winter time. It's not like as if we're blowing the roof off of these records here, folks. So, um, you know, I know they're using words like warmest January and things like that, but we're talking about 37 degrees. Uh, we're not talking about 50s and 60s. So don't go grabbing your global warming sunglasses just quite yet. All right, let's check out some weather for our friends across the pond. And believe it or not, for once, well, guess what? It's raining in the UK. We knew that. More rain throughout Germany, parts of Romania. Uh, other than that, Norway, your typical snow. Denmark getting some rain right now. That showers and storms are moving out of the area, but the United Kingdom is being inundated right now, especially England, London. You guys are seeing the heaviest of rain. It's making its pass through as we have scattered showers across the parts of Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. And let's take a look at the forecast for the UK. Rain, some heavy, moving east along with windy conditions, followed by colder conditions. Uh, sunny skies and scattered showers, possibly heavy with hail and, and falling as snow at times in the north and over the hills further south. Tonight, wintry showers easing, leaving clear skies and a touch of frost in places, but further wet and windy following across the northern areas. And on Friday, a windy day with gales in place, notably northern England with some gusts of 60 to 70 miles per hour, mainly dry and sunny in the south, but rain further north, particularly over the hills. And let's take a look at the lower 48 right now. Well, surprise, surprise, we've got rain in the south. And folks over there in Louisiana, New Orleans, asking what the temperature or what the weather's going to look like for Mardi Gras, it looks like it's going to rain. Uh, that's just my opinion. But right now, we'll check out the GFS. As every day we've checked out this radar live in the morning, we have tons of rain across the south, moving across Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. And there's that little system that's going to bring some snow showers to North Carolina and Virginia. Right now, it's all rain in North Carolina. Some parts of the eastern North Carolina are seeing snow showers. Also snow in Kentucky, eastern Kentucky, and also southwestern Virginia right now. That's only begun. That moisture will continue to move towards the coast. They're expecting three to six inches of snow closer to the coast in North Carolina, spots in uh, western North Carolina as well could see three to five inches of snow. Again, this is not going to be one of those storms that's going to um, keep everyone home for the weekend, but it is a significant snow for this part of the country, and it's first of the year of this kind of uh, magnitude. All right, let's check out some weather stats for today, folks. First of all, let's take a look at our wind chill temperatures. Not that yet. Uh, just as cold as we were yesterday, if not colder, man, the most, most of the plain states, the Midwest, uh, the central part of the United States, the four corners, wind chills are pretty cold. In fact, we're getting wind chill readings all the way through the South. So on top of this rain that you guys are getting, you're getting this raw, cool day with wind chills in the thirties and forties. That's just plain old stay inside for the day for you Southerners down there. You guys don't like that kind of weather. I don't blame you. All right, the frost freeze line. Well, let's see how far that goes. Yep, pretty much down almost to the south. Tennessee marks that line. So the south stays above freezing, but the majority of us are at freezing temperatures, especially if you live in the northern plain states. You're looking at negative temperatures right now. These are not wind chills. These are actual temps. Negative 10 across parts of Minnesota. Also in Wisconsin, negative 3. Hello, Jesse. Matt, you're waking up to a brisk 6 degrees this morning. And most of us across the rest of the area in the Midwest, in the Ohio Valley in the 20s, here in upstate New York, teens and single digits up until Maine and just over the border, we're looking at temperatures in the negatives here near Toronto and Ontario. Let's take a look at our forecasted highs for today. Pretty toasty in the south. If you live in the Panhandle, Florida and southward, nice day for you. But this rain and moisture that's hitting right now in the south is going to keep temperatures in the 50s and 60s today. Meanwhile, in the north, looking at 40s and 50s in the mid parts of Tennessee and Kentucky, across Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska.
but some cooler air in the northern plains and near the Great Lakes and some colder air up near Maine in the northern parts where temperatures won't make it out of the teens today. All right, let's take a look at our low temperatures tonight overnight. Pretty darn cold unless you live in Miami, but everywhere else we're going to see some pretty frigid conditions. In fact, what's funny about this weather, <clears throat> we're going to see 20s and 30s here in New York, but tonight we're, we could drop it as low as negative 3 degrees before rebounding nicely tomorrow for a high of 30 degrees. So some very frigid cold air on the way uh, for us, and we're going to continue to see shots of cold air. In fact, today I saw uh, Joe Bastardi on Twitter telling us that if the models are correct for the next 10 days and then the 30 days following it, he's saying that we are not going to have an early spring, which kind of correlates with what I've been warning since January. Uh, since we've had average temperatures and mild temperatures in some spots, we are flirting with having a late winter and a, and a late spring. So in other words, March could be rough for a lot of us folks here in the Northeast, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes and the North Northern Plains. Even further south than that, because we do see a couple shots of colder air making its way far south a couple of times between now and March 4th. And let's see what Noah has in store for us. This is today's map. Rain across the south, snow for North Carolina and Virginia. The heaviest snow is going to be near the east coast, and that's where we could see the three to six inches fall. And that's quite a bit for those folks out there in the, in the far eastern part of North Carolina. And then tomorrow, quiet day across most of the nations. Rain in the southwest in Arizona, California, maybe parts of Nevada. And then uh, on Saturday, February 22nd, which is Mari and I's big day. Uh, we will be celebrating that in dry weather, chilly conditions, but it's going to be wet in the southwest. And thank God for a little bit of a break from the saturating rains here in the south by Saturday, Friday and Saturday. So after you guys get through this next batch of rain, we will see some daylight, uh, no pun intended. And I wanted to show you guys this really quick before I left the air. Um, that, that nor'easter we were watching for the 27th. Now this storm is trekking even further east or further west, more inland than hugging the coast. Parts of the northeast will start off as rain. By the time the cold front moves in after this storm passes through, the transition to snow will begin and another low pressure system forms right behind that. So instead of seeing this nor'easter type feature in the first place, there's another feature behind it that develops and we'll hit the northeast. Now, right now, it's too far to tell. We're about a week away from this storm, but this could impact the northeast, and I'm still hopeful for snow along the I-95 corridor, especially out there in Massachusetts and all the way up the coast. It seems like the closer you are to the east coast, the more chances of heavy snow you're gonna have. So Boston, you might get your chance here finally of getting some significant snowfall. Looks to be a, a pretty light event for most of us in upstate New York. But if you live in Maine, New Hampshire, or Vermont, Massachusetts, I think that right now this is your best shot at some accumulating snow anywhere in the area of five to eight inches is possible with this system, possibly even more snow in some isolated areas. So I wanted to give an update on that potential storm next week. It is out there still on the GFS, and there's a pretty good chance that we will see some decent snow out here in the Northeast. Plenty of rain to go around for most of us though, for the days to come. Unfortunately, more for the south and another big snow system developing in the beginning of March. This one looks like it's gonna stay mainly in the Great Lakes, rain for the east coast. And we're gonna be on a ridge and fridge again in March. So March is not gonna be any different from February. It's gonna be up and down, cold temperatures, warm temperatures, mild temperatures, lots of rain so far, and potentially some decent snowmakers on the horizon. All right, guys, we hope everyone has a great day and make sure that you tune in to the show tomorrow morning for another update and then Friday night for another live edition of the Grand Solar Minimum channel evening update. Until then, guys, stay safe and we'll talk soon. Do you like this show? Give us a thumbs up. Want to support us more? Share to your favorite social media platform, buy a t-shirt or become a Patreon. All links are in the description below.